Grade 5 math number 16, long division with one digit divisor. I'm going to do a real quick review for you and then we'll get underway. This is a long division problem. You can see I've labeled all the parts. The divisor is on the outside. It's usually the smaller number. The dividend is usually a bigger number on the inside. The quotient is the answer. It's written above the dividend and anything that's left over that the divisor won't fit into is a remainder and that goes up next to the quotient. Okay? So, that's the parts. Let's see what we've got here. Emma is driving from Chicago to Springfield, Illinois to see Abraham Lincoln's National Historic Home. The trip is 201 miles. If she gets there in three hours, how fast did she drive? So think, we need to split this 201 miles that she drove into the hours that she drove. So the 201 mile trip is going to be split into three pieces. And then we'll know how much goes into each piece. Okay? So 201 is going to be divided by 3. Now, I can see you know that it's already got a 67 here, but let's see how I got that. Okay? We ask ourselves if 3 can fit into 2. No, it can't. So then we have to move over. Can 3 fit into 20? Yes, it can. 3 times 6 is 18. So because we put it into the 20, the 6 goes above the 0 of the 20. It didn't fit into the 2, so the answer did not go above the 2. See that? It went above the 20, the 0 place value. See that? The, ten, the 1's place value for the 20. So we do the 3 times 6, which is 18, and we subtract it from the 20, and we get 2. Now it's the 1's turn to come down, and we ask ourselves, how many times does 3 fit into this 21? So it's almost as if that 18's not there, see? It's like as if the 21 was up inside of the division sign, okay? So 3 fits into 21 7 times, because 3 times 7 is 21. We do our subtraction and get 0, and our answer is 67. So Emma drove 67 miles per hour, probably on average, because unless she had cruise control, but she drove 67 miles per hour to get there. And then in the three hours, it was 67, 67, 67, and then that was the 201 miles, see? Now, multiplication is the inverse operation for division. We multiply to check our answers. So in order to find out if we did this correctly, we take our quotient and we multiply it by the divisor. If it can, comes out equaling the dividend, we know we've done it right. So we do 67 times 3. 3 times 7 is 21. We carry the 2 and put the 1 down. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 2 more is 19, 20. 201. That's the dividend. We did it correctly. All right? So remember, you can always check your answers by doing multiplication. You multiply the quotient by the divisor, the two guys on the outside. Okay? All right. So let's look at this one. We've got 1,368 divided by 4. We ask ourselves, can the 4 fit into the 1? No, it can't. But can it fit into 13? Yes, because 4 times 3 is 12. See it? So we don't put the answer above the 1 because it didn't fit into the 1. We put our answer above the 3 that is in the 13's 1's place because that's what we fit it into. See? 3 times 4 is 12, and we write our 12, and we do our subtraction, and we get 1 left over. And now it's the 6's turn to come down, and we ask ourselves, how many times can 4 fit into 16? 4 times 4 is 16. So we put our 4 up here, we do our subtraction, and we get 0. Now we're right here, and some people get confused. They say, well, there's a 0 there. What do I do? Well, you have to remember the 8's turn is to come down. So now it's almost as if that 0 isn't there. 4 goes into 8 two times, and we write the answer above the 8. 4 times 2 is 8. We do our subtraction and get a remainder of 0. Then to check it, we do 342 times 4. See? The outside ones, 342 times 4. Quotient times divisor. 2 times 4 is 8. 4 times 4 is 16. Carry the 1. Put the 6 down. 4 times 3 is 12 plus one more is 13, and we have 1, 3, 6, 8, 1, 3, 6, 8. We did it right. 
All right. So let's see what happens with the remainder. We have 5 and we have 236. So we're dividing 236 by this 5. We ask ourselves, can 5 fit into 2? Nope. Can 5 fit into 23? Yes, because 5 times 4 is 20. So that's why the 4 got put above the 3. It didn't fit into the 2, it fit into the 23. So we put our 20 down below it and do our subtraction, and we get 23 take away 20 is 3. Now it's the 6's turn to come down. 5 goes into 36. Well, 5 times 7 is 35. So we put the 7 above the 6, because that's the place value that turned it into a 36. We get 35. We do our subtraction and get a 1. And because 5 won't fit into 1, it's our remainder. So when we go to check it, we multiply the quotient 47 times the divisor 5, the two outside ones, we get 235, but the dividend is 236. So we have to remember to add this remainder 1 to it, and then we'll get our 236, see? So always remember when you're checking, after you do your multiplication of your quotient and your divisor, the two outside ones, add your remainders, okay? Now, what happens if we're sloppy and we don't write our numbers correctly? This happens a lot with long division. It's one of the biggest problems that people get long division wrong is because they don't write clearly or they don't line up their numbers correctly in the correct column. So let's see what the mistake was that happened here. 2 doesn't go into 1, so we don't have anything there, but 2 can fit into 11 because 2 times 5 is 10. So we put our 5 up here and we put our 10 down there and we did our subtraction. Then our person moved the 7 down and said 2 goes into 17 8 times. 2 times 8 is 16. They did their subtraction. They took away their, they, they dropped the 1 down. 17 take away 16. And then they dropped the 7 down. Now do you see the mistake that happened because they didn't line it up correctly? So then when they did it again and put an 8 up there, they had 1 left over and they dropped the 6 down and they said, wait a minute, I have another 16. So it can go in again, and they put another 8 there, and finally got a 0. Do you see what happened? So here's the correct way. Because they didn't line these numbers up correctly, they accidentally dropped the 7 two times. They dropped it here, and they dropped it there. So they ended up getting 5,888, or 588 remainder 8, when the answer was really just 588. So you have to make sure your columns are straight, okay? Sometimes your book or your homework will say to solve for n for a division problem. So this is how we're going to do this one. We have 589 equals 7 times 84 plus n. Well, what's n? What we do is we multiply the 7 times 84, we get 588, and we subtract that from the 589, that's one left over, that must have been the remainder. So if this one was written as a long division problem, it probably looked like this. I bet you that's what it looked like. It had the 589 as the dividend, and the 7 went into it. Now, how else could it have been written? No. I don't think there's any other way it could have been written, huh? Because 7 doesn't go into 84. See? So it would have to have been written that way. All right? So let's try this one. We've got f n is equal to 5 times 63 plus 4. So we do 63 times the 5. We do these two and multiply them. And 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. Put the 5 down. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 1 is 31. So now we have this plus 4. So we add the 4 to the bottom and we get 319. And we know that the problem, that the n is equal to 319. What do you think this division problem looked like? Did it probably look something like this? You know, I bet it did, because they multiplied the quotient and the divisor, 
and that was the remainder, see, the plus four. Okay, so I have many other videos about division in a Joanne School Division playlist. It's got high school level, it's got uh, videos for people taking their GED, it's got third grade, fourth grade, and now it's going to have this fifth grade level one, okay? So check out my Joanne School Division playlist. There's other division videos in there that might help you. I wanted to show you this really quick. This is a trick. I actually made a video about this. If you want to turn your paper sideways, it'll give you straight columns to do your long division. Look at that. See? And if you want to use this as your scratch paper, if your teacher doesn't want you to turn it in sideways, you could use this as your scratch paper to get the right answers on your homework or a scratch paper on a test. And then you can turn it the other way to write it correctly, but at least you know you'll have done them correctly. But talk to your teacher and see if she'll let you turn them in sideways. Does it make sense, doesn't it? All right, so that's long division with one-digit divisors. I hope I was able to help you. Uh, remember, long division isn't hard. It's just long, okay? See you next video. I'm going to talk about two-digit divisors. Bye.